Hey ladies, I'm Yanka of the Excellent Woman um, blog and vlog. And today I'm going to be talking about marriage because I feel like there's an attack on marriages right now. And I'm going to start with the verse Hebrews 12. 1. And that says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And th that verse, I chose it because I'm going to tell you a story and I want to set it up because um, marriage is like a race. I know when I was um, training specifically, I remember I was training for this, um, like a, I think it was a hundred, maybe a 200 mile relay. And it was like a 12 person relay. So I got up every morning. So at that time I was like teaching fitness classes and all that. So I would get up very early in the morning, maybe like 5, 4.35 and I would go run. And I remember when I started, it was like those first, you know, for a while, it was those, the first mile or so, those first couple of miles. It's, you know, you have this voice in your head. Why are you doing this? This is so dumb, blah, blah, blah. You know, just kind of beating up on you. And, you know, I'm tired. It's just all these voices. But, you know, I continued to run. And then, like, you know, around mile, mile two and a half, three, it would just, like, go away. And then you hit a stride and you would coast through. And then, you know, you can run your miles. I don't know. I think my leg of the race was, like, 12 or 13 miles. So, I, you know, you will hit a little coasting point and then you'll, you know, um, come back and you'll be fine. But this happened like day in and day out. And you just had to be, you know, strong. You had to um, gird yourself, you know, and I would, you know, be prepared. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me or I can do all things through, through the Messiah who strengthens me. And, you know, sometimes you do want to stop, but you just pressed on. You kept going. And then also, you know, when I was running this half marathon, you, you know, you, of course, same thing. I was actually in the race and, you know, you're running the thoughts come at the beginning and then they like go away. And then I remember when I got to mile 11 and it was like <laughs> what they call heartbreak hill. So, you know, y'all are running, you think you, <laughs> you got this thing going and you hit your stride. But then I just saw this hill just going up this incline. And I was just like, like it almost broke my spirit. I mean, with two miles left, you know, I had run all this way. I only had two to go. And just when I was about to stop, some man came out and he put his hand in my back and he pushed me along. And we started, you know, we started talking. He just like, because he came and he said, oh, nah. He said, we ain't stopping now. We done came too far. And he pushed me. And so we're running, we're chatting along, you know, and before I know it, I was at the finish line. So for two miles, this guy helped carry me. And so that's kind of where I'm going with this right now. Because, you know, with marriage, you, you know, you have, it has its challenges. If you think about it, you have two people coming from usually two different cultures or backgrounds. And I mean culture, I mean um, different households. Because each household, I think, have, a, have its own culture. So you come from, you know, a different way of being raised. And you're dealing with different things. And then you come together and try to combine this thing you know, for one life, um, life. And here's the thing. Marriage is not between two people. It's a God-ordained institution. So it's the husband, the wife, and God, or Yahuwah, or Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus, whatever name you use for the Most High, it's him, all right? He ordained this institution. And so when you have, you know, the, um, the opposition's that's going to come, you have to anchor in him. Because I was telling a friend before, I'm like, you and the father are the majority. So no matter what comes against you, always run to him. If you don't like what your husband is doing, go to the father. Because he'll change things around. When I had the issues in my marriage earlier, it was just like, I'm like, father, you're going to have to do something about, <laughs> about him. Because notice it wasn't my problem, but him. But the father just said, leave him to me. And here's the other thing, you know, you, I was reading in Hebrews too. It was, um, also, um, it was something in a chapter about, um, uh, what did it say? Oh, how, um, Esau sought the blessing through tears and the thing of the matter, you know, you can come to the father and, you know, cry, oh, I don't like this, but the father always deals with us from a point 
of victory. He see Gideon, he came to Gideon. How did he address Gideon? He said, um, hello, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon was like, who, me? <laughs> He's like, and notice what Gideon said. He's like, I'm the dumbest one in my tribe. I, and I'm the poorest one. He had all these excuses about how he saw himself. But notice how the father saw him. He saw him as a mighty man of valor. Same thing. He came to Moses. Moses, I want you to go, you know, talk to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, I got this speech impediment, blah, blah, blah. No. And the father never deals with you that way. So you have to see yourself as the excellent woman. Because this, this um, blog and vlog isn't just about me. It's about you, you are the excellent woman. You are the Proverbs 31 woman. That's how the father sees us. So you have to see yourself that way. And so, you know, you don't, and I think a lot of us make the, um, we make the, the mistake of looking to our spouses for everything. And that's not the way it should be because the father says, I mean, the scripture says, curse is the man who leans upon the armor of flesh. So you're not trusting in your spouse. You know, you are trusting the most high. Both of you should be trusting him. And that's what makes the thing work. So when they have their shortcomings or whatever, you give them the grace, just like the father gave you the grace. So it's because you're not perfect. Newsflash. <laughs> you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're, we're, we have, we're not, you know. Um, and the way that we think you're thinking is being perfected and you are being perfected, but it, have you reached that point? No, you haven't. So you give your spouse grace, even if they're not, you know, not having a great attitude. You don't let that change you because you have to make a quality decision that, you know, what, this is what the father said. And I'm going to align with him. I'm going to trust him. And if you trust him, he, 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 he'll smooth the thing out. He'll understand work it out that you have things in you. We all have these things that need to be rooted out. You know, they need to come up because you have trees growing up in you. And it, you know, it, it um, influences the way you think and you see things. You know, you have, you see the world through lenses. And what the spirit does is he begin to remove those things and uproot those roots in you that are not producing fruit. Because the whole thing is the father with him is us to produce fruit. He told Adam and Eve to be, um, be fruitful, um, multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth. Those were the four things he told them to do. And so everything in us is always about producing, producing those four things. So if your um, marriage is not doing that, you need to go to the father about it. And like I said before, you and the father are the majority. It's not your spouse. I mean, they may be doing some, or not saying the nicest things or not doing the nicest things, and here's where the um, fruit comes from. Because, you know, like, Father, I'm going to give them grace. Because you got to remember the Father gave you grace. He gave you mercy, you know. And that's why, you know, I always look at myself. I'm like, Father, I can forgive my husband. I can, you know, do that because I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And I also me. say, I'm like, um, I, well, if my husband says things that it's been far you and in between but he, if he says or does something I just say I say to him I physically say I speak this out I find no fault with you and you you know you tell yourself that because you just kind of we're, we're in automatic mode about some things and those things need to come out you know as you are this marriage so, ma on race you make a quality decision that you and your spouse are going to finish this race together you're going to do this together because you made a commitment and a covenant with the most high and the thing about covenants is that the father is not a covenant breaker and he takes this very seriously. And the thing in our culture, you know, and I want for, um, at one time took it very lightly, you know, um, you know, if I didn't like the marriage or whatever, bye, you know, but that's not the way the father sees it. And so, it, and you can see um, with that broken covenant, it brings in some bad things into your life. A lot of marriages break up because of um, strife. You know, and I remember years ago when um, I was at this church and this, I think she was a pastor. Well, she was a pastor's wife. She was talking about how the enemy wants, he wants to get at your children, get at your children. He wants to divide and do all of that. And she said, um, he does that um, one way he does that is through strife. And like that thing stuck with me. And I went and I looked up strife in the scripture and it said that where strife is, there's every evil work. And I was like, every evil work? You know, you think about evil things, all of that is into play. So at that point, I made a quality decision that I would not allow strife in my heart. And I would not allow that in my home. I would not open up my home to that. 
So, you you know, the thing is, you have to forgive no matter what your spouse does or says. You forgive them. Even um, now, if you're in an abusive situation, you can forgive that, too. I was listening to this testimony about a lady who, you know, every time her spouse, would, her husband would beat her, she would forgive him. And um, but she 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 got out of the relationship, you know, and I don't you know, this is not about letting anybody mistreat you. Or, and I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm just addressing, you know what? The people who, you know, you may not, you may be going through a rough patch right now, but you know that your spouse, your husband is good, man. You know that he has some things to work on, but you know, you know, he's doing the things that he needs to do. Um, it may not be to, to your liking, but he's doing what he needs to do, you know? So that's what I'm talking about right now. And you may not like that. He's not saying this or doing that. Okay. We talk, that's what I'm talking about. The little light things. So, um, you, you know, you, you don't want to harden heart because that's that's why um, the divorce the written divorce was given in the scripture because of the the heart the hardness of hearts. So we don't want our hearts hardened. You want to you know come at this like you know um, with a servant's heart because you know Yeshua Jesus he was a servant. You know he came to serve us. So you want to do the same thing and understand that you know you have a destiny to get to the father purpose great things he has great things planned for you and your spouse for your marriage but you have to do it his way it's not what your way and you cannot give all the attention to your 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 fickle feelings because they change with the wind so you you know you stake your claim and your stance on what the word says if the father says this, I'm going to set myself to agree with this. Um, I can go on and on in this video, but here's what I just want to leave you with. You want to repent for what is your is in your heart. Because you have, we all have wicked things there. And it's actually a good thing to make it a, a habit of repenting anyway. And you want to not harbor unforgiveness. Because if you when you do that, you break the the father can't. Um, bless you with that. You're you like you have this umbrella. Like, oh, Father, heal this, do this, bless me. And but he can't because you're break. You have this this thing here that he cannot get beyond, or you're blocking it. He's not blocking because the Father says, "I hope withhold no good thing for you." So you have to come into you know know what the Scripture says, and then align yourself with that, and come in agreement to His will and His word, and then you go from there. So, and then you pray for your spouse, you know, you pray for them because they're dealing with things and you have to get out your head, your own feelings. And it's all about me and blah, blah, or it's a lot about me. And he's not treating me this. Let that go. Let it go. Because in, in Hebrews, Esau tried to get the blessing through his crying out and that didn't work. It does not work. When the father deals with you, he's dealing with you from a point of victory. And you have to come up to that, ladies. We have to come up to that because your inheritance is a good and prosperous mar marriage. That's your inheritance. However, you can't get there with the behavior of a child, like acting like a child. You have to grow up. Just like I wouldn't, my husband and I would not give our children their inheritance right now. They're not, you know, the maturity is not there yet, right? But when they're a little older and they, you know, um, understand about finances and how it comes and also how it goes, and they, they show the level that they can manage it and take care of their finances and grow and all that, that's when the inheritance comes. And it's the same thing. You have to grow up. You have to grow up. You have to mature in order to get to this level or else you, you're going to end up with broken vows and, and um, a broken covenant, which brings famine. Um, if you remember the story about uh, David and they for three years there was a famine in the land. He was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And the father revealed to him. He was like, seventy years ago, of uh, Saul. Saul broke this covenant with this group, and that caused a famine. They were dealing with the famine seventy years later, and he showed, of course, showed him how to get through it because the the father, his grace is sufficient, his mercy is all of it sufficient for us. So, but understand, you don't want to bring that on your children. I mean, the selfishness, to, in my perspective, there's such selfishness, selfishness, because you have, you know, parents split up, and then the kid has to bounce back and forth between houses. That, to me, that's the craziest thing. And you, and you're talking about a product of divorce. You know, I come from a long line of divorces. You know, so, but I have set myself in agreement with the word, and that that will not come to be. Not my children will not experience that. I'm like father. I'm lying with you and I don't know what I have to do, but I'm willing to do whatever it is that you would have for me because I don't want that to cross over into this generation. We're not doing that. So make a quality decision that you're going to align, align yourself to the word. And I want to leave you with this prayer. This is the one 
I prayed and I'll um there's a link I got it from Bill Winston's Winston Ministries website and it's a um, good prayer and, I, and this is one thing I began to pray for my my husband and myself because you know what what I'm doing is not working but if you do things the way the Father does it's going to work for you it's going to work here it is Heavenly Father I thank you for my husband and for the gift he is to my life I thank you that he is a man of integrity and that our entire family is blessed to have him as our leader. I stand in faith believing that he has favor with you and every person with whom he comes into contact. I thank you that he follows your command to love you with all his heart, soul, strength, and mind. I stand in faith believing that he will trust you with every spiritual, emotional, physical, relational, and financial situation in his life and not lean on his own understanding. But instead, he'll seek you in all he does, knowing that you will show him every step he should take. I thank you for his desire to read, study, and meditate on your word so you can apply it to every part of his life. I also stand in faith that he loves those around him as himself, that he will clothe himself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, and that he will always walk in forgiveness, not letting offense take root in his heart. And I thank you, Father, that every need is met in my husband's life and that he walks in prosperity and the blessing. I recognize that every good and perfect thing in his life is from you. And I give you the glory for all you have done and are continuing to do for him. And I thank you for showing me how to be the wife that he needs me to be so that I can be a blessing to him. In Yeshua's name, so be it. So, ladies, you know, that's a good starting point. You know, say that prayer. You pray for your husband. Because, you know, when you allow the father into those situations, you allow him into your home, he begins to direct and change. And you'll, you, I guarantee you'll see a change in your husband. Don't go taking those little things to him. You didn't do it. You said, don't do that. You know, don't do it. Don't work. Take it to the father. Guarantee. I can guarantee it. You know, you stick with him. Stick with him on this because you have a covenant with him and you can trust him in this covenant. And he'll turn, he'll turn that man around. I, I, I am a living witness, all right? So that's what I have for you, ladies. Be blessed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.